everybody, it's Boa from Boa's Melties and Thomas is here. He has joined me today for a special Boa's birthday YouTube video. Hi. <laughs> so this video is literally just going to be about uh, the carer's side of being in a relationship with someone who has a chronic illness. Can you please not eat in my ear? I'm not. I'm done. I hate people eating in my ear. So anyway from your point of view um should we go to the start back at the start when i first started getting mm. sick and we didn't know what the hell was wrong with me that's a good place to start okay so from my point of view it was hell on earth i didn't know what the hell was going on i didn't have the energy that i used to have and my knees were starting to go and all i wanted to do was exercise and walk my dogs and it was getting very frustrating and very scary because it was just out of my character to be that kind of fatigued. Um, because I was always be up my ass, always wanting to do things. So it was it was pretty scary. And I did ignore it. Uh, especially the knees, didn't I? I completely mm -hmm. ignored it for a long time, didn't really do anything about it. Until one day I was walking down the road with the dog and my left knee went from under me. I couldn't bear weight on it at all had to find a big branch and use it to get back down to the house that was when we were in the caravan at moms mm -hmm. anyway so that's when i started to go shit i think i need to actually go and get this looked at further and pushed further because i started that's when i realized i needed to take it serious i guess because mm -hmm. it was now going to affect me being able to walk <clears throat> at all yes. on that leg so when you first realized or like can you even remember like did I just go to you and say dude this is much more serious than I thought or what way did what way did we do it I can't remember <laughs> I think useless uh, uh, I think it was more of you know we're concentrating a lot on the time of let's find, find a fix for this mm. you know let's fix this I, we were more focused you know, on, on trying to manage it though too weren't we with the no, knee straps and stuff no, well, well yeah I remember but, that. We're, but we were hopeful for a positive you know permanent fix mm. that we could do but just with you know your consultant in the nhs it just took so long mm -hmm. to try and find that get to the bottom of it to really to diagnose it well that's for just a start. The, that's just the knees too that's not even the me side of it and i think we were just moving into the caravan at that stage yeah and i i was still running my own business and mm -hmm. we ash were, go lie down you want to knock that over um She's gonna knock this over. Ash, go on, go and sit down. Ash, up here. Um, oh. Yeah, so I was running the business at the time and the band was doing really well and mm -hmm. we were doing loads of shows everywhere, so. That's right, that was terrifying for me when you were away because so I didn't want to leave the house, remember? Yeah, so that was kind of tough. So there's a lot going on, but you know, the caravan, I suppose, to being so close to your mum, that yeah. kind of helped us. I think if we had been still living in a house somewhere, you know, away from your mum, it would probably been maybe a lot tougher. Yeah, no, definitely, yeah. And, yeah, yeah, but uh, <coughs> I guess mom helped with school run yeah. when you weren't about and but stuff. Yeah. I think all all you can do really is deal with it as best as you can and try and get informed as much as you can. But I don't think until you really have a diagnosis, you can do, you can start making positive steps towards Here, it. I have a question for you then, because this will help others out there, like not only from a spoony point of view, as in the person who is sick. But from the person who loves the person who's sick, uh -huh. did you at the start think that maybe it was like over exaggerated with the pain or the fatigue that I had? Or did you think, shit, this is real because she is not like that? You know, you know, because a lot of people misunderstand chronic illness because one minute you're OK, next mm -hmm. minute you're like this and you can barely move, you know, so... Like from that aspect, were you like maybe not as educated as you are now? Well, no, um, I definitely was ed as ed educated, but it was probably, I, you know, I'm more of like, right, this is a problem. What do we do to mitigate the problem? Uh, you're or, a fixer. Or fix, mm -hmm. or fix the problem. So I didn't really get too caught up in the whole, oh, you know, it's just like, right, this is kind of how it is now. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it's going to be like in the future, but not, not, not worry about the future yet because we don't know what's going to happen. So let's deal with the problems now. And yeah, that's kind of like... When you're suffering with it, 
Yeah. <clears throat> I can't help but think about the future. You know, from yeah. my point of view, I was going, well, I want to go work with dogs. I want to be able to walk dogs. What about when yeah, yeah. it's older? What about this? What about that? What about the other? That's the anxiety kicking in. But I think our, you didn't I think our, our life you know, in general was in flux then. We were trying to build a house. You know, yeah. We had a lot going on, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, this was just another thing that we had to deal with. Mm. And but Did you, did you uh, resent... The illness, illness, because the reason I ask that is when you're first sick, um, even even now at times, when I'm not doing so good, uh -huh. you know, and say stuff's not been done or this can't be done or that can't be done because I'm not well, I'm sick, I'm mm. trying my best, but Ash, chill. Anyway, so did you, because right, you would give off an energy, I'm an energy person, I feel energy and I know a lot of fellow spoonies are the same uh -huh. but your resentment is towards the illness not me personally but you know energy doesn't work that way so i feel the resentment or the anger or the annoyance mm -hmm. so from that point of view that's where i always try to tell um you know anyone who messages me oh my husband doesn't get it he's so angry at me and all but i'm trying to explain to them that it's not you it's the illness that they're pissed off at so if I could get from your perspective, I don't, I don't think I was ever so angry. But no, no, yeah. no I'm not saying you, you, your energy. Yeah, no, would can, give of off course, that you're pissed off rather course, than no, no, it's it's, know, it's not always going to be yay. No, <laughs> no, of course, and you know, I want to be honest here. And, and it's it, fair it, it, it is frustrating because it's not about you know, you know, you can't really make plans. You know, if you were, you know, we'd both always been working really hard. So if we were trying mm -hmm. to do something or plan something at the weekend. And then, you know, you had a bad spell. Yeah. We couldn't do it. You know, it's frustrating, not just for me, but, you know, for Caleb. For Caleb. Yeah. And, you know, we can't do the things we can. But look, look, that's just part and parcel of... But that has taken time for you to fully yeah, but the, accept and adapt but it to. But it takes time to fully understand, you know, what you're going through. Because Absolutely. it takes time. Because even I didn't know. It takes time for actually diagnose and then mm -hmm. fully, mm -hmm. you know, the symptoms to fully really wear their head and understand yeah. what's going on. So it's, you know... Yes, you know, you are going through it, but, you know, everyone has to adopt it. Yeah, everybody's so. going through it in the family. Yeah. You know, because I felt this incredible pressure when I wasn't feeling well. Is that a delivery? No. Um, when I'm not feeling good, that how me getting sick is affecting my mm -hmm. boys. You know, how it's affecting you guys immediately because you're in the house with me. Because remember there was times I wouldn't even leave the house and you'd awful pressure to try and, you know work and do the school run and do everything because I, I was just too afraid like I had agoraphobia at one point I was too frightened I was in the caravan mm -hmm. I was too afraid to leave the house I was going like what if my knees go what if I can't drive what if this what if that what if the other and it really really panicked me to the point where I couldn't get out mm -hmm. but you were you I have to say like you but I, but were doer, incredible you know, you know I'm a doer so I know I'm gonna, 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 gonna cry I'm tearing up when you know that I'm gonna do it you know if you can't do it then I have to do it. Yeah, but vice versa, but you know. I'm not gonna go. She's a bitch. She, <laughs> she can't do it. So no, means I have to do it. <laughs> oh God, no. I, but, but you, uh, you were good that way. I mean, at the very start, no, there, like, there I, was resentment I and stuff, and I, I did, I, I did feel the resentment, but I knew it wasn't directed at me. I knew it was directed at the illness. But it's just a change. Every some people, you know, cope with change differently, and you know, it was mm. obviously quite a big life change. Huge. So. You know, it's it, yeah, it's frustration. You know, there there is frustration, but you know, it doesn't mean things have to. I gotta sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, coronavirus! <laughs> no, okay. Yeah. Only had four coronas. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't mean things have to. You know, stop. You just you just have to find a new way of living. Yes, you know? that you, is how I you know, feel. And yes, that's, that's just it. That is the best but the, way to put it. But that's but you know that's not. You know, exclusive to us. Every everyone goes through change, Which and they is have why to adapt. We're doing this video. There's plenty of videos out there, and plenty of couples and people that have to adapt to you know, challenging times, and that's what you know. That's what life's all about. You Did just have to you find keep pushing? that educating yourself on the illnesses? Comment. <laughs> She's gonna do it. The postman's coming. He's in the estate. That's how we know he's even entered our estate. There he is. Right? Can you press? Well, I can get up. Back in a minute. We're back. It was the postman. Remind me what we were talking about. Ash, chill out. We were just saying that hey, adapting to change of everything happening and you know <coughs> is
it's a journey, so you just have to adapt it. Ash! Keep pushing on. Right, so the other thing that I wanted to ask you for other people's benefit more than anything is did you find I can't I can't remember again I know I'm quite communicative it's the kind of person I am uh -huh. um, and we we believe in communication as a couple mm -hmm. um, but did I give you loads of information on my illness or did you look it up yourself or maybe a bit of both I you know I definitely remember us talking about certain things and I definitely did look stuff up mm -hmm. because I think with your knees you know, we sort of did try to look into the medical side, especially for the straps, yeah. to see what were the best things and how they sort of best combated your out of tracking on your um, yeah your kneecaps. So yeah, you had to go through all that information to get sort of to find out what's the best straps were. So it was all about the straps. Remember that back then. I remember that. Yeah, because I it's tried so many different straps. But that was the thing. We weren't really focusing on the illness. We were focusing on how do we manage this, mm -hmm. wasn't it? Not even how do we cure it. It was how do I get through each day? What's going to make it easier for me to do daily things? Mm -hmm. So we we did go through that quite a bit, didn't we? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just like I want this video to give value to anyone who is the partner of someone who's sick, but also someone who's sick, who needs their partner to see this, that, you know, you can get through I, We've been going through this, what, 10 years now? Mm -hmm. And we're still together. <laughs> I want them to see that there is, you know, there is a way to create a balance and there is a way to get, it's not the end of the relationship. You know, it doesn't have to change. It can adapt. It doesn't have to change. You just have to, but I think, as you get older, because we're both now in our 40s, things start to slow down in terms of, you know, you're not going to party in a whole pile anymore. Well, I can't anyway. You're partying in the house. So it kind of fits, Yeah. you know, now because, you know, there's not a whole pile of stress for us. Well, what would you out. say to someone who, like I have people <coughs> messaging me who's just turned 20 mm -hmm. and they've been diagnosed with ME or MS or something, you know, what would you say to them or to their partners or boyfriends or girlfriends or parents? You just you just really need to educate yourself to understand, you know. Obviously, hey man. obviously, you, you can't you can't physically understand what they're going through. But I think if you understand from a theoretical point of view, and maybe read other people's stories, and there's plenty of forums out there that we yeah, find, yeah. there's plenty of Facebook groups now that you know we're a part of in terms of mm -hmm. community that have similar situations. So, and I think that helps. You know, talking helps and. People who have empathy of what you're going through, it helps. Um, <clears throat> it's not just people suffering. There's other people like you know, say like the partners or their moms yeah. who have messaged you about certain things. You know, anyone close <coughs> to you really does need to be educated. If you educate yourself, then you just understand better. Yeah, which leads to empathy. Yeah. which is what I say all the time. Yeah, but I just don't like the you know when people are messaging me saying. You know, my husband doesn't understand my wife doesn't yeah. understand you know they they're mean to me they won't let me rest you know all this kind of thing they're being called lazy they're being called this that and the other and look it's called chronic fatigue syndrome yeah. even fibromyalgia things like that chronic fatigue is a part of it i think you also have to change your expectations you know be mm -hmm. real, realistic about your expectations just in terms of life and stuff you plan to do together and you know there's more planning involved if we oh, do yeah. plan to go out there's more stuff we have to think about but again, that just becomes part of your life, like anything. It just becomes part of it, whereas before it wasn't, but now it is. So it's just part of it. Mm -hmm. It's like planning anything. Because like, see, <coughs> like, but don't panic. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't panic. panic. Don't worry. But stick together be okay. too. You know, because see, I don't know if I could get through this without you. You couldn't. <laughs> I gotta go again. You can't even reach cups. <laughs> How the fuck could you get, get it is, It's such an incredibly <coughs> isolating thing to have happen to you with any form of chronic illness, disability, or men mental illness. All of them. Mm -hmm. um, now, obviously, I find the Melties, the Melty community, everybody that I've got to know online, and it has helped so much. Online. But it's people who know what I'm talking about, you know. So while I do this to reach out to show people they're not alone, uh -huh. it's also shown me that I'm Oof. not alone. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is she misbehaving as always? Bit of a <laughs> anyway, so I do think that having someone that you can rely on 
is a huge factor in trying to get through it. Have a sense Guys, of, chill out. Have a sense of humor, that's good. Oh yeah, a sense of humor, yeah. But knowing each other really well too and being able to communicate, I think communication's key, yeah. isn't it? Like that's such a cliche thing, but it is true. Like we communicate all the time, we talk, we sit, we talk it out, but also being... Kissing, it's good. <laughs> Being able to take things on board and maybe change or adapt to suit things that you've been told. You take advice, use advice, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of people can't do that. I can't sit like this. Well, sit back then. I can't sit back. <clears throat> it's too deep at the minute. It'll hurt my knees. <laughs> look, see, no. No, it makes me look too fat. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so in conclusion, Thomas. Well. What would you like to say to the, all the folks out there who are maybe struggling a wee bit, maybe their partners or friends or people are doubting them, giving them shit? You know, from the Spoonie point of view, what would you say? And then also to that Spoonie's partner who's maybe doubting them, giving them shit, what do you say to them too? Because I want my fellow Spoonies to get their partners to watch this too. Uh -huh. Because you've been there, done that, bought a t-shirt, you're still here, we're still fighting strong, we're still together. And I have to say to all you partners out there, please, please, please just try to understand, educate and be there for them because it is a huge, huge thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like you support me big time and I support you, but obviously you have to do more because I'm a spoonie. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so what, what would you tell, first of all, the spoonies and then the spoonie partners or girlfriends or friends or whatever just don't panic um there's always a way through so if you have a support network around you everyone's different disease the disease shows no mercy sometimes but you just yeah. gotta understand that it's not personal yeah and, that's a good thing yeah you know this is something that you just have to change and adapt to and we, we're just very lucky we went through you know, because we had opportunities where we could move in that caravan and be very close to Cheryl's parents, who helped out a lot when I was yeah. away with work or away with the band. But um, everyone's situation is different. I think just reach out to that. your support <laughs> network or there's people online you can talk to as well. And don't be afraid to talk to Me people. Me too. Yeah, don't be afraid to talk to people. Um, because you'll get through it. And, you know, when you do get through it, you'll look back and go, well, I'm probably better for it. Mm -hmm. you know, things have to be hard sometimes for it to be easier and that's just and what would you happens. say to anyone oh, wow. who's been with somebody for a long time and they're just not getting it and they're still relentlessly being mean to them and not understanding i know what i would say to them it's probably not worthwhile being together yeah i would say get rid of them you know, or even friends like i've lost friends who yeah. just haven't understood what i'm going through yeah the well, judge you know, people prejudge it's horrible depends you know if you beat beating your head against the wall trying to tell people and they can't see that they probably don't want to see mm. so you know that's really that's an individual the might of your life then individual decision but yeah you know you'll probably know yourself what's going to be best as a spoonie you're going through enough you shouldn't have yeah. to try to convince people as well you know it's, it shouldn't no. be our job but it is sadly just, i'm just like pretty lucky with you that you know you are <laughs> Very lucky. that you 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 know did actually really take it on board and tried to do everything you could to understand but then i'm also the kind of person who will take it on board to make you understand as well i'm not gonna just let it go i get as much information as possible i'll hand it to you and make you read it you know i'll explain things All to right. you know and some people they just don't have that ability to communicate but you need to really work on that but in the meantime if you're getting nowhere make them watch this you know, um, it can be done. It does work. Um, yeah, I don't really need to add any more to you. So that's humor. It's good. <laughs> I set up for. Yeah. But and music, <laughs> music helps bring everybody together, doesn't it? Tell Doggies me? too. Doggies, yeah. Pets, your cuddle buddies, your kids. You know, whatever you can do. And of course, don't forget the Melty Army community. We're here to support and help each other. Like. <coughs> it literally helps me just as much as everyone else mm -hmm. and I don't know what I would have done without it and all I did was find a hobby that I really enjoyed was extremely passionate about and then it just kind of grew from there so if you can find something to maybe distract you whatever that may be 
Even if it's just reading or yeah. writing, you know, on a computer. Writing? So here you I write. No, you write on a computer. I was typing. typing. <laughs> I'm old school. I like a notebook and I write. So write a sweet message <laughs> back. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> right? Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really, really hope this helped. Um, I hope you can get help and support from whoever you need to be getting help and support from because it really does help. And we're gonna go now because it's my birthday and I get to eat bad stuff all day and I'm not allowed to feel guilty about it. It's your birthday. It. It's your birthday. I'm not allowed to feel guilty about it today. Right, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> right, guys, bye. 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 All the best.